quick. What does Skyrim, Stardew Valley and Sailwind have in common? Well, picture this for now. You're standing on some beach with nothing but a ship, a name and the word it's the one you need to find your island. And that's when you set sail. But what if you don't like how the sailing works in the game? Let me just give you one idea why I want to make this game so bad. Because instead of traditional difficulty modes, I want to build a choose your own adventure type of difficulty system. So for sailing, there will be three or four options to choose from. The first is an arcade-like movement where the ship just moves with W, A, S and D. Whereas the other options get progressively more simulated. So in the next one, you have to do some basic sailing by moving the sail into the wind to get faster. And on the next one, <coughs> and on the one after that, you also have to keep in mind how much sail you released and how strong the wind is, up until it becomes a full-blown sail wind mechanic. Same with navigation. Don't like to keep your ship from committing capsize while trying to figure out where in the world you are? Well, you're not alone. But in this case, just set the navigation mode to a Skyrim-like compass with icons and all their help and enjoy the sailing. Don't want to figure out the sailing but still want a challenge? Just set the navigation mode to dead of arrival and then figure out your location with nothing but your map and landmarks in the environment. Or mix and match however you like. But let's not get overloaded at the beginning. You probably figured by now I'm playing some unique mechanics and features for this game and you have just seen one of them. And before I talk about the next one which makes this game special, let me just talk about... First of all, this is currently my game. It doesn't have a name yet, but it's a small open world with as much detail in it as I can humanly put in there. It's the kind of game where you can go do what you want. I'm basing all the stuff that goes into the game off of four gameplay pillars, which I call is what other games would call adventure. But I don't think that term is accurate. It includes everything that affects the world in general, like combat, encounters, the fact that you can find small dungeons just by walking over the sand and suddenly hear a hollow sound, which then indicates a hatch under the sand, like a smuggler's hiding place. Sailing and navigation fall under this category too. Like I said, it's a general world setting, if you so will. Base building might surprise you by being about base building. The player is supposed to have the option to find an island, remember? It's quite isolated and nobody is going to bother you there. You can repair and extend your building and if you want to build a small port. But then people are going to bother you there and you can choose if you want to have an upright port or more of a smuggler's nest. To be clear, I'm not planning a building system like in Minecraft or Valheim where you can place individual walls and doors and so on. But more of a mix of Stardew Valley and Age of Empires. In Stardew, you can upgrade your farmhouse by buying well upgrades. It'll automatically extend your house but I'm more interested in building whole spaces or room parts of this. So you set in blueprint for an extension or a whole new building and then like in Age of Empires you have to collect or buy resources and apply them to your blueprint. Sort of like uh, in the forest. Actually quite a lot like in the forest now that I'm thinking about it. On the other hand Merchant tree. That's the part of the game where you dump your inventory on a merchant for some sweet shiny metal. <clears throat> Of course, you can be a bit more strategic by figuring out what is more expensive on what region, get as much stuff in your ship's limited inventory and then make a merchant run to all the ports and haggle for a profit. Also, smuggling is part of that pillar. It's like being a merchant, but the secret ingredient is crime. So, a merchant with the added benefit of either avoiding guards or ships on the way to your, uh, client? Or go around town in the middle of the night and, um, uh, and, uh, find? things people haven't lost yet and then haggle to make a profit. The last pillar is called narrative and uh, oh boy, it's, it's, it's there. It's in the back of my mind and I want to build a story in there as well, but, but I haven't ever done that. So yeah, I'm just leaving it there and come back to it when, uh, when uh, I come back to it. So lots of sailing, discovering, trading, shooting people in the face and getting a hand cut off. Be a merchant and build a base and find deco elements and recipes in the world, which also goes for your ship and so on. If you choose the according difficulty setting, of course, as the choose your own adventure kind of thing is a foundational part of the game. I mean, you might have figured already, but it's really important. Okay, sounds like a lot, right? I'm aware of the scale this game could potentially have and I'm planning on going just deep enough to make every mechanic fun to play and not break if you touch but it. But I'm also not going to simulate a whole economy if you know what I'm, I'm saying. I'm also planning on working smart and not hard. For example, the inventory system is a core feature of essentially everything. Uh, base building relies on that. The merchants rely on that. Player obviously. The, the ship. So yeah, I'm going to see what the overlap is and then just, you know, just reuse as much as possible. Although I am definitely not expecting the game to be finished in a couple of months. That being said, I'll get into the technical stuff a little later. But for now... Do 
you know the feeling in the summer or late spring when the sun is completely gone but the birds are still chirping? Have you ever taken a walk then? It's quite a bizarre atmosphere and I want to make the night feel like this time of day when everybody is at home, most people are asleep, here and there is a window still illuminated half the time by TVs but that's not going in the game. And outside? You can hear the soundscape of different insects and the noise of the calm night nature. And I want to stress this because it is really important to me to convey that different feeling of, for example, the city that is crowded and busy by day and quiet and calm by night. Where you see cats just walking over the street with no pressure, or even lying there and rolling around, or small insects quietly buzzing around street lamps. You know, it's still warm, but a little humid, and if you go outside of town, then maybe you catch a glimpse of the stars. A typical sleeping village kind of summer night, or day, but for the whole game. The difference in time of day, it should feel like a fable-like vacation where you're in charge all the time. That is also why I put Skyrim into the mix, as Skyrim gives you that wonderful sense of being on that vacation. A weird sort of vacation, but still. Same with Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. Yeah, I just compared Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing with Skyrim. I told you they had something in common. Now where a sail went? I have a very specific vision for the world, which is inspired by tabletop miniatures. Because they catapult you in this different world just by looking at them. Also because last year, just by pure luck of chance, I saw what miniatures and terrain building can look like, and I instantly fell in love with that. That's why I chose this character from Ximo for the prototype. That's why the palm trunk looks like it consists of hemp rope, and the vegetation looks so plasticky. Because miniatures. Also a good miniature painter would paint the vegetation, but I haven't achieved a convincing look for that. Yet. But already, the lanterns and the foliage and the palm tree with the water. Yeah, did I mention I fell in love with this style? As you can imagine, I'll be doing all the assets, all the models, textures, animation, shaders and so on. Simply because there are little to no asset packs available for what I'm planning and they're going to take most of the time. You may be thinking now that all this sounds like a whole lot, but I'm mostly worried about the assets for the world, NPCs, items, environments and so on. I'm lucky enough that Unity has an absolutely fantastic community and that there's a lot of helper tools and shortcuts available on the asset store and even more important, GitHub. Yeah, you'd be impressed what you can find on the internet if you just keep looking for long enough. The ocean, for example, is a plugin called Crest. And despite its complexity and absolute bonkers feature set, it is open source and by that completely available for free for everyone, where the devs just ask you to donate a little something for their cause if you want. Or how about an inventory system? You can go overboard and use Inventory Pro, which used to be on the asset store, but since has been deprecated and the devs were kind enough to make it open source, same with dynamic decals. Since I'm using Unity's built-in render pipeline or burp for the cool kids, though I'm probably going for the universal inventory system because it is not as feature heavy, which in this case is a good thing, since I have to make all of them work together, especially when working with the component safe system for Unity. And this too is available on GitHub. Like I said, it's crazy what you can find by just looking around. In addition to that, I've been using Unity for almost a decade now, so I've collected quite some helper asset on the asset store itself. Amplify, of course, where I already made this translucent shader and this awesome wind shader, in which the individual branches are swaying. And an easy state for actually quite a lot of things, which includes quests, AI, UI, BI, what? full screen editor, which I didn't realize I own until like two days ago, and motion matching, which I'm curious to try out. And aside from Unity, I've my trusty suit of Blender with all its new geometry nodes, which hopefully Hopefully we'll fast track some assets. I mean it already worked with all the vegetation. Pure ref, which is also free and an absolute help when it comes to references. And of course Substance D and Substance P. So a lot of helper and a lot of tools, which will help me make the game and focus on what makes the game special to Although me. now with all the stuff listed I feel like I'm making an asset flip game of sorts. Ugh. Creepy thought. To make the game worthy of anyone's time and why I want to make it so badly are the unique ideas I'm planning to incorporate. I mean, the panel allows for some interesting mechanics all by itself. The arcade versus the simulated type of ship movement and the day nighttime difference. Another neat thing I want to put in as well is an enhanced item description, which features a one to a three liner with some historical tidbits. So you're even. What is it called? Oh yeah, right. Learning something. And because I really like me some history. Like the eye ointment from the 10th century that by pure chance of luck and generations of experimentation, I guess, produced something that we nowadays call antibiotics. Yeah, it was titled the best recipe in the book because you could treat all matter of things with it. I mean, of course you can. It's antibiotics in medieval time. It's like 
the thing. It's currently tested as a way to get rid of antimicrobial resistant germs. That's the thing. And it kills you right in the hospital. And the good stuff from the medieval scar maker is currently getting the kryptonite treatment for that. Yeah, guess what my healing potion will be based on. Same with food items like hard tech and explanations why the Cuba Libre can be traced back to sailors' rations and why guacamole is centuries old. Thanks for tasting history with Max Miller for that idea. Also not sponsored or associated. The last thing I want to test out is a potentially infinite health bar. You know, in games you can heal by eating and drinking potions and so on. Yeah, what about healing? before you're hurt. Just imagine you run around the game at the very beginning, eating and drinking the, of course, limited supply of healing items, just to end up with a health bar that looks like you're the final boss. But since you depleted the world of healing items, you now have to play with this. I don't think that will make you worry at the first, second or thirtieth encounter. But I imagine it's a tense situation when you're at the final boss and down to 15 hit points and he comes charging right at you. Although to be fair, I'm kind of on the fence with this one, as it seems more like a neat idea than really practical, at least for this game. But I invite everyone into interested to discuss any part of the game anyway. And now with the runtime of the video, I didn't even got around to the details, like different handwriting where you can already sense the type of personality behind stuff like notes, logbooks, messages and bottles. Where all the post-processing effects are already made and, and which have their fair share of influence over this art style. You know, things that make the world alive. I'll try to post a regular update on the development and I would like to do so every two weeks, although that might just work in the beginning where progress is made relatively fast. Although by making all the assets first, I can imagine that the progress will be somewhat slower in the beginning and then with all the assets done will be slower at the end because of all the systems in the background that needs to be developed. Yeah, I think realistically, although I'm trying to be as quick as possible with releasing videos, I'll do one every month and then post more regular updates over on Patreon where you are wholeheartedly invited to join everyone supporting us.